Right. And uh, if someone could help with muting now with uh, Yolanda, so she's okay, great. So let us get ready for our next speaker. And that is Dr. Catherine Monahan. She's a ND and MS, and she's a licensed naturopathic doctor and owner of Remedy Natural Medicine. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in human biology from Stanford University and with a doctorate in naturopathic medicine and a Master of Science in Integrative Mental Health from National University of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon, which is the oldest of naturopathic schools in the country. In her telemedicine practice, she addresses endocrine and autoimmune related chronic illnesses, as well as mental health concerns. You know the list, mood swings, and on and on and on. And her practice emphasizes the use of holistic nutrition and lifestyle therapies, in addition to laboratory analysis, biotherapeutic drainage, botanical medicine, nutrient and amino acid therapy, homeopathy, Hakomi-based counseling, and somatic experiencing. We're excited about the experiential that she's gonna bring us today. She loves to partner with patients so that they can heal and feel more peace and joy and power to share their gifts with the world. And here's Dr. Catherine Monahan with her, her message for us today is, your voice will go farther from a balanced place, nutrient testing and treatment for mood and more. Here's Dr. Catherine. Thank you, Erica, for such a thorough introduction. Let's get me sharing. Let me know if you need anything, Catherine, and you're good to go. We see your screen awesome. right on. Okay. I just want to acknowledge that that was so amazing from Yolanda. It was like the perfect um, segue to transition into a calm place to present. Uh, happy International Women's Day to everyone here. I'm thrilled to be here with you to add to the collective synergy and support that comes from joining forces. I see every day that as people find their authentic voice and the freedom to unapologetically take up space to share their message and move through the world, it is often an integral piece of their healing and transformative for their health. Oh, this happened last time. Let's get my slides moving forward. There we go. Some quick level setting for those new to naturopathic medicine. Practitioners hold a doctoral level degree with two levels of board exams, continuing education, and state-by-state -state licensure. The practice makes use of modern science, traditional modes of healing, and treats holistically on both a physical and emotional level. It also organizes around the principles of prevention and treating the root cause. All treatment plans are personalized and may contain supplemental support, but will always have nutritional and lifestyle components as well. While I work with people on a number of health goals, I have additional, additional specialty training in integrated mental health. From a balanced body, mind, and heart, one can be more resilient, authentic, and powerful. And I am speaking about personal power, not power over personal power that lifts us and allows us to lift others. It does not involve limiting or taking power away from anyone else. In a recent lecture I attended, naturopathic Dr. Orna Isaacson shared this visual by one of our longtime contributors to the field, Dr. Dick Tom. It illustrates so well why some people don't heal if we only treat at the physical and functional level and ignore the energetic or emotional level. It also demonstrates why addressing and healing our emotional and spiritual health often actually shift and improve our physical health. This is just a quick acknowledgement that there isn't a one size fits all prescription. So the contents of this presentation are for educational purposes only. It's always advised and helpful to work with your practitioners so that nothing interacts with your current medications and supplements and you can have a treatment plan customized to your own health profile. One of the modalities I often use is herbal support. There are of course many herbs, but three I especially love are hawthorn, leaf, and flower, which supports the emotional heart, including grief, depression, loneliness, and in general is very tonifying to the central nervous system. 
Lavender is wonderful for alleviating anxiety. And for those working on finding or amplifying their voice, I love Opal Panics for setting boundaries with empowerment and the right to take up space here on the planet. It is also excellent in cases where there has been developmental trauma. Homeopathy and flower essences are both gentle but profoundly powerful medicines to treat at the energetic layer. 30C is a potency that is safe to DIY with, and the more common remedies can typically be found at your local health food store. Rescue Remedy is a very common over-the-counter flower essence that you may recognize. It contains five popular flower essences and works quite well for many with anxious energy. There are, however, many more flower essences, and I love making custom blends for people. Given our theme of finding and amplifying one's voice, I think it's also helpful to remember that depression can be the result of suppressed anger and anxiety can stem from a lack of safety or support. These tools can facilitate, facilitate an energetic shift and transformation to purposeful expression and action. Optimal diet really does vary from person to person and from culture to culture. However, there are some guidelines that support many who come to eating for mood stability. Other areas around diet where I work with people are determining food intolerances, evaluating gut health, and the ability to absorb nutrients from our food. Damage to the gut lining prevents our gut from making the neurotransmitters serotonin and dopamine that keep us in a balanced mood and 80% of our serotonin is made in our gut, which is far more than in our brain. People's requirements and enjoyment of movement do differ significantly. While we all benefit from physical activity, we enjoy and benefit from different types. Some people are motivated by data and a tracking device that counts their steps. Others do well with movement with a friend or in a group setting. And for others, the investment in a personal trainer or coach is a worthwhile commitment. All of these arrangements help to relieve stress and boost mood. While we can do a lot for our own health in terms of seeking and maintaining balance, there are times that it can be very helpful and even life-changing to work with a practitioner, which may include anytime someone feels ready and excited about it, when someone has not been feeling well for an extended period of time trying to do it on their own, or when extreme mood states are present. Strong urges for self-harm, manic episodes, and psychosis can result from severe biochemical imbalances that are all absolutely treatable and temporary. I love being able to work with people to help them recover and then understand how to prevent returning to these difficult places. Oftentimes, it can be very helpful to look at some labs, even when a conventional practitioner has reviewed the labs and told someone results are normal. In some cases, naturopathic practitioners have a narrower definition of normal, often referred to as functional ranges, that give additional information and clues as to how to help someone feel better, especially when combined with medical history, signs, and symptoms. Inflammation, a slow thyroid, low iron levels, insufficient vitamin D, blood sugar dysregulation, and low cholesterol can all be physiological causes of depression. A fast thyroid, low iron levels, high blood pressure, and elevated pulse can all be physiological causes of anxiety. If one of these is abnormal, we address it. If all of these look good, we may consider another set of labs that are not as commonly seen in the conventional setting. There are <clears throat> There are more than 300 nutrients involved in our biochemistry, but seven nutrient imbalances dominate mental health disorders. How do biochemical imbalances such as low zinc, high copper, insufficient methylation affect mental wellness? These nutrient levels affect our dopamine production and regulation of neurotransmitters, which in turn affect our mood. Serotonin and dopamine imbalances often correlate with a low mood, whereas norepinephrine and GABA often correlate with anxious states. Thank you for being the first person to encourage me on my art journey, for helping fuel that creative drive. Thank you for helping me to take back my power and to learn what that is. I am truly grateful that the universe brought you into my life. 
Moments such as this one sum up the spirit and power of this medicine. And for perspective, this individual initially presented in my office with anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, and PTSD. We continue to work together, but now her goals are around actively pursuing joy, her words, and how to allow for an even fuller and more authentic expression of her truth and her gifts. And on more than one occasion, her spirit and growth have inspired mine. I see my role with others, sometimes as a hand of support to help remind, rediscover, or reconnect with their truth. And sometimes it might be holding space for people to safely access and make those discoveries for the first time or a combination of both. I also see the space I hold and the time spent in connection as the training grounds for someone's nervous system. In more advanced work, we begin, we begin to make the distinction that out in the world, there may be times we find ourselves in situations where we don't <clears throat> share or under, others don't share or understand our perspective. It can feel lonely at times to stay true to one's core values, and that's okay. We've done the work together and the muscle memory is there for what it feels like to be connected and supported. We can learn to summon that same internal commitment to our worth, to calmly but firmly having one's own back. And sometimes if one stands firm and breathes through those lonely moments, others are often attracted to that grounded authenticity and suddenly you may even find yourself met with support and new allies. And then we see that it is all interconnected because women who have been supported enough to confidently have their own backs, then go on to empower other women and girls and humans. And we build a better society, which study after study in multiple countries demonstrate that in some, <clears throat> in, demonstrate that in more gender equal communities, health outcomes are better for all genders. Making some noise truly benefits all of us. And then for those for whom it feels okay, I invite you to participate in a brief experiential exercise um, where you can go ahead and settle into your seat. Feel the support of your chair. If it feels okay, you can close your eyes or just soften your gaze so that you can tune out your external environment for a minute and pay attention to your own experience. Go ahead and begin to notice your breath and whether it is rapid or slow today, shallow or going all the way down to your belly. And there's no right or wrong. You're just noticing with acceptance and curiosity. And then if it feels okay, you can picture a time and place where you feel happy, safe, relaxed, confident, you might be alone, you might be with others, it might be a place you go regularly, it might be from when you were a child. And if you don't have a memory of feeling that way yet, that's also totally fine to imagine that space. Then with the same curiosity and acceptance, notice where you feel your confidence in your body, where that power is for you. Is it a solid sense in your solar plexus above your navel? A firm connection with the earth? A sense of alignment between your mind and your heart? Whatever it is, honor it and know that it is there for you to access whenever it serves you. Once you've really locked that in, you can send some good energy to yourself. And if it feels okay and you have the capacity today, you can send some energy to all the other individuals here coming together and share, sharing connection and community. And then you can start to deepen your breath and feel the support of your chair. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes or bring yourself back into focus and rejoin the group. And that's called an emotional anchor. And it's always there and can be especially helpful when we're at our edge and in those places where we're still learning to stay in our power, even when the environment can be a little bit challenging. You know where that lives in your system. 
And thanks so much. Uh, I think we have a few a minute or two for questions, if there are any. I think we should keep going with our process. We're making up time. And I see somebody put something in the chat. Yes, a, a testimonial for Dr. Catherine from New Shakahali. Yes. Any testimonials for Dr. Catherine? Yes. I really am excited to keep reading my labs and get more and more specific and terrific about how I do my health picture. So I really want to thank you, Dr. Catherine. And everybody come off mute and just give her a hoot and holler. <laughs> I appreciate you for coming thank and playing with us. Yeah, and speaking of just moving your body and anchoring, we're going to get ready for our third speaker today and just uh, give it a shake off. So much beautiful energy. So just want you all to be really super resourced and grounded when you hear our next speaker. And we're all set with everything and all the little housekeeping things. You can find us live on Facebook streaming. You can grab the background. If you feel like you wanna have a fun, pretty background made by Meredith Stafford, amazing. And um, so now I'm going to introduce our third speaker and just right, make sure if you, if you wanna catch exactly what I'm saying, you can read the bio sheet we have placed in the chat. So grab that, all the freebies from all of our speakers are there and how you can connect, okay? You want me to share my, okay. Jennifer wants to share her screen. So I think that's what you meant. Okay, so let me, let me give you her bio and I'm gonna speed it up. So Jennifer B. Lyle, PhD, has worked towards the well-being of youth and their families. Her education and work have taken place in the streets across continents with community organizations, government schools and academia. Much of Jennifer's work over the past 15 years has focused on the development of youth through the viable programs for diverse populations. As Missy, executive director, that's three S's, Jennifer supervises management staff and program directors, guides the design of Missy's continuum of services and service benchmarks. She oversees the use of funding, data collection, and continuous improvement of Missy services, recruits professional development providers, that's many of you, and meets monthly with members of Missy service population to see how well Missy is meeting their needs. Missy, this Missy organization is so impressive. I'm so excited to welcome Jennifer Lyle, and she is speaking about healing wounds, breaking cycles. Let's give a hands up for Miss Lyle. Take it away. Thank you so much. Um, it's showing that the screen is still, screen sharing is still disabled. Okay, we'll get that ready for you. Okay. And um, so what I would thought I would, first I wanna just say thank you, you to the folks who went before me. I just, I love the folks who go before me. <laughs> um, I just remember in terms of ancestors and people, um, it's just really beautiful for laying the groundwork. Um, and I also know that the people who came before me in this work or on this earth um, have all been, you know, working to heal wounds and, you know, break cycles. So today for this conversation, I thought I would just give you an overview of some of the work that we're doing to transform this issue of sexual exploitation um, in this community and across the world. And just also know that, you know, at Missy, we don't see this as an issue of sexual exploitation. We see this as a larger issue of how women and girls are treated in this, in this universe, and particularly Black women and girls. And so we're working to change this in Oakland and in the Bay Area, but we know we are having an impact on the entire world uh, when we do this well and we're thoughtful and we we take a depth um, to the work. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Make sure I do this right. And here we are. 
So um, as Erica said, we are Missy and we were founded in 2007. And what's important about our founding is that we were founded by folks who were survivors of this experience. So they knew that they needed to make a change. What they were seeing was that young girls were being arrested for being prostituted. And what they knew was that these young people needed support um, to, to get out of this life. And it was, they got into the life because they weren't supported. So at Missy, we provide direct services, which is case management, uh, means supporting with all kinds of, of needs, um, also being a support and a friend. Um, we have a drop-in center where folks can just come in for respite. They can come in and get a meal. Uh, they can come in and meet other young women who are on their journey to, to thriving and support. Um, we do youth engagement and leadership and advocacy, which is really bringing young people to the table so that they're informing decisions that are made about their lives, which never really happens for them. Um, we are also really involved in systemic change. We know that um, these issues exist because there are larger, broader issues within our communities. And when we change those things like, you know, access to food, access to housing, um, we're creating conditions that young people aren't being sort of targeted towards um, being taken advantage of and exploited. Uh, we have a training institute where we support people to learn more about this. So we support families, we support churches, communities, and young people to understand how this issue is taken such a stronghold in our communities and how to transform it. Um, and that's also part of our community outreach. So we're on the blade, which is the strip or the, the space where a lot of young people are um, prostituted. Um, and we go out and do outreach and inform people about the resources that we have available. And it's just a place for also people to understand that we care about them um, and that there are people out there in the communities that care and wanna see something different. And then our prevention work is our work in the schools. So we support young people to identify um, ways in which they're being coerced or groomed. And we also create conditions so that young people can come to us before exploiters get to them. Um, what is human trafficking? Some folks may already know about this, but you know, there's, it's a very broad topic. Um, and so we talk about it in our focus, we look at sex trafficking. And in each case, what we understand is that folks are compelled to do this. There, there are a number of conversations where folks talk about um, you know, their sex work and where people are making decisions. I won't engage necessarily that debate now um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a debate and it's an important debate. But we work with young people who are primarily compelled through force, fraud, or coercion. And those things are the, taking place. And we know when someone is 18 or when they're under 18, when they're 13, 14, or 15, they're not engaged in sex trafficking because you know, they just woke up one day and they made a choice. There was something happening that compelled them into this. And why that's important to be thinking about that, and you'll hear me say that over and over, is because it, it creates a different kind of responsibility in this community, right? So if they had different conditions in their lives, would they be doing that? And we know the answer is no. So we're, you know, a lot of the work of Missy has been changing the language and the way we talk about it. And then, you know, labor trafficking is very much the same. Um, that folks, it's forced fraud or coercion. Um, you know, po folks may receive money or they may, but it's, it's so minimal that forced fraud or coercion are still present. Um, so with human trafficking, we understand there's an action, right? So that they're recruited or they're harbored or they're taken or they're kidnapped. There are various different ways that people come into it. Um, but, and then just example, generally I, I ask the group, you know, what do you think? What's force, what's fraud, what's coercion? And, you know, please, you know, feel free to put in the chat, you know, examples um, that you are aware of. Um, but I will provide 
Um, you know, so when we say force in terms of sexual exploitation, exploitation, it's often when a young person, um, you know, they may be staying with someone and who's giving, you know, their, um, and the person, you know, they bring someone in and they're saying, you don't have a choice. You must um, have sex with this person. Um, or, you know, they, they literally put a gun to someone's head. Um, fraud is, you know, oh, you could be a model or, oh, I just want you to meet some people, right? Um, so they, they've given them some information that's obviously not true. And, and then there's this expectation. And then coercion, we see a lot of young folks get into that because they don't have housing, they don't have food, and they have to make, the, they have to make a choice between being exploited or eating that day or having a safe place to live. Um, and again, it's commercial sex or forced labor. So those are the, those are the, the, the broadest um, areas that we're, we're seeing. So um, in 2019, there were 11,500 cases uh, reported to the trafficking hotline. And something that's daunting for us is 13% were reported from California. And, and we know, you know, California is highly populated, but there's something else going on, right? That there's, there's so many, there's such a high concentration. Um, and one of the great things about California is we have some of the most, we have some very important policies that are really protecting young people and, and folks from labor trafficking. And those are, we're, we're building and evolving those but because you know it's this is happening, and then there's some response from cities and states and and the the government, the state government. Um, and so, because we're looking at it as we're taking the fault from the the person who's being exploited, and we're putting it in you know the fault in our systems. So we need to be looking differently. Um, some people ask like, why is why is um, human trafficking exploding to such an extent? Does anyone have an idea if you want to put in the chat? Why human trafficking is exploding? Why it's uh, 150 $150 billion a year? It goes way up to the top. Oh no, someone said that before. Yes, I said that. It goes way up to the top. It's 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 in every branch of this in of, of everything. Potentially, is that is that kind of what you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things. It's easier with technology and connectedness. Yes, it goes way top. So, you know, Erica, what you said, yes. Um, internet, pandemic, poverty, yes. Uh, and there's there's one other thing that's that's big that, um, and it's okay that you don't know it because a lot of people aren't necessarily thinking about it, except exploiters know, and so. Many people are leading drug and gun trafficking and engaging in um, human trafficking. So some of the big reasons that we're seeing youth, um, it ex exploding with youth to the extent that it is, is one, because you can only sell a gun once, or you can sell drugs once, but you can sell a body over and over and over again. And you can sell a young person's body um, and a, a person, you know, when we have disenfranchised, we talk about disenfranchised, you talk about, we have a lot of people who are, you know, internationals or, you know, folks who come to the United States, but most of the people that we see are folks who were born within the United States and are citizens of, of, of Oakland. And we see that because we're talking about black girls, right? So you talk about disenfranchised, it's a young person, it's a girl, and it's a, it's a black girl. And you know, when you look at the, all of those levels, um, you know, we have pimps who say, well, nobody's gonna be looking for them or nobody cares, right? And so we know that and we understand that. And so that's why we're using different language because we know that we're going to transform that, right? Um, we know that you know poverty is happening, um, displacement, housing, and we need to address those issues as well as supporting young people to come off of the streets. So when we talk about our work, we say we're not only you know working to pull people off of streets, we're changing the conditions that bring them in. 
right? And then we're supporting them to stay out. So let me go into the next slide. Huh, for some reason. Okay. So again, um, the ways in which sex trafficking happens is, you know, folks are recruited. Um, they're usually groomed and there are various different ways that this happened. Um, you know, there's some folks are, a lot of people say, you know, it's happening a lot um, online um, via the internet because it's easier and it's harder to, to catch people. Um, it's happening, you know, in hotels, it's happening if folks live in California and Oakland, you know, it's an international. And it said we have one of the longest strips in the in the country, so that's why it's so high in Oakland. Um, there's a lot of commerce. Um, does anybody have an idea of who is, you know, the most the, the profile of the folks who do some of the most trafficking, or the the, the buyers? Tell us. Okay, so within trafficking, you have the traffic person, you have an exploiter. And then you have, um, well, you have exploiters on two ends. So you have the buyer and the seller, right? And sometimes the buyer and the seller can be the same. For this community within Oakland and you know, broadly within the United States, the profile of the person who's most likely to be the buyer is um, a white male between the ages of uh, 29 and 49. And so, you know, for us, it's not generally people who live in or come into the community, or who live in the communities, are part of the communities. Um, the people who are most likely to sell are, are people within the community, um, or who works, you know, who has who's a close relationship with the girl. So, but what we're finding is the most likely to be arrested or find are the, the girl, and the exploiter, the the person who's doing the selling or the pimp. Sorry, I don't know why it doesn't. Um, so again, briefly, it's, you know, the things that are happening with child sex trafficking is exploitation. Um, and we understand it as we never use the language child prostitute because a child never chooses to be prostituted. We understand it as abuse. And we, we want other folks to understand that it is actually abuse. Um, youth are given a nightly quota. Um, they never make those decisions around that, you know, in terms of, you know, their frame of mind, they are understanding that they need food, they need money, they need to be safe. Um, sometimes someone is compelling them because they're saying, you know, if you would, if you loved me, you would do this for me. So what are we doing to shift the lens? Because I want you to leave this conversation understanding that we are not victims. We will not always be victims of this. And that's the reason that we do this work. So we want to understand, we want to, we understand and we want others to understand that oppression, inequality, and abuse are parts of human trafficking. They are significant components, regardless of whether the person comes from the United States or they come from without the United States. And those are the things that we need to change, right? And so the ways in which we change those things is we're changing the language, right? We're not calling people prostitutes or illegal immigrants. We're calling people survivors, right? And the ways in which we engage folks is we support them to understand what is it that you want? How is it that we support you? How is it that we are creating pathways out of this life that you won't slip back in. So the pathway is out and the pathway, the pathway out is opened and the pathway back in is closed. And the ways in which we do that is we, we create circumstances that young people can understand that there is love for them, that there are people that care about them, that we can't always find housing for them, but we can work with them around how, what are the other things that you have in your life? What are the other resources that you have in your life that you can lean on now? And if someone really truly loved you and cared for you, how would they be in support of you and what you do? We support young people to come to tables with policymakers so that policymakers are not making um, decisions without them, 
that policymakers understand what are the conditions of their lives and that people don't turn their eyes away from, from folks because it's uncomfortable and, and, and an awful thing, frankly, but that we are linking arms and saying, how do we as a community transform this issue so that young people are never subject to this, that young people and women don't have to make the decision to be harmed in order to live and survive and support their children. So some of the things that I invite you to be engaged in, um, and there are different ways to be engaged, um, to understand that a lot of times, you know, a lot of times we get the question, why is someone doing this? And it's because people don't under, they don't identify themselves as, as a victim, as a, even a survivor of sexual exploitation. They understand that maybe they're doing this for love or that they're, you know, getting over on someone and that, you know, that's where I was in my mind. I'm just gaming these people, right? Um, but not really understanding that there were op other opportunities. Um, but the reason that it's important to understand that is because we don't rescue or save anyone. We create conditions for them to find pathways out on their own. And we clear pathways, we support them to get resources. Other ways of being an ally is listening to people and understanding how they describe their circumstances and conditions. Um, you know, a lot of times the first thing that people ask for is not necessarily to leave the streets, but to, to be able to get food regularly, um, to be able to have someone to talk to about how to re-enter their family. So those are the kinds of things that they want to know. We are trying to really support the school district so that the teachers and school district districts aren't kicking people out because sometimes the only place that's keeping them off of the streets is that they have schools to go to because um, they're getting food there, they're getting adult support, um, and it's a safe place to be even if they're nodding off at the desk. And so how are we creating circumstances in the places where they're already going um, that they can be supported and, and helped? Um, and we're also providing options and opportunities because we understand that young people you know, once you're in it, um, it takes some time to, to move out of that lifestyle. And we understand that they have experienced a considerable, a considerable amount of trauma before they even, before an exploiter even got to them. An exploiter identified them and that's how they were able to coerce them. So how are we creating conditions for them to heal trauma that they had through foster care system, um, other abuse that they've experienced? And, knowing that you know, they can have some tools um, that will help them navigate themselves off of the street when they're, when they're ready to go. Um, and so you know, something struck me about um, the doctor who spoke before me about how you know, there, are, there are many components of healing and transforming your life. So how do we as a community, even if you're not directly interacting with folks, how do you create conditions either with talking to policymakers, telling someone when you pass them on the street, that's not a prostitute, that child is being uh, abused. Um, demanding that your policymakers put money towards gender-based violence change. Um, we had to, our organization had to fight the city of Oakland to put money into gender-based violence um, and understand that this is happening at a, an alarming what rate. And it affects the young people themselves, but it affects their communities. It affects the children that they have. It affects their families. So violence that's perpetrated against these young people has a huge impact on our world. And we can all, say something to our policymakers about that. And then finally, um, you know, there are ways of support. You can give $5, $10, um, whatever resources that you feel like you can support or even a kind word to people who are in this work, um, supporting it. There's, there are organizations across the nation who are doing this work and they're doing a great job and it's hard work, but we know that we're effective. 
We know that we're effective. We know that we're making an impact. And in fact, we have people who we've served who are coming into leadership in this work and they are the most effective people. So I'm gonna end with that. And again, thank you for, for hearing. Thank you for your energy. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions now or after, because I know Erica, you're trying to keep us on course. Oh yeah, I gave up the whole time thing a few 10 minutes ago, but I love everything you said. And I just want everybody to stand up, literally stand up and just let's all together say unacceptable. Let's all just do that. And let's stamp our feet about how unacceptable that is. Unacceptable. 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 And Thank I'll you. just, I don't know, uh, there was a question I just saw, and I'm sorry I wasn't watching the chat, but someone asked about FOSTA, and there have been, there's, there's a, a couple of things about FOSTA. Um, just so if folks don't know, in brief, FOSTA was, there's laws and policies that um, they're really, there's higher regulation on certain things, and not you know, folks are not able to arrest young people in, in certain states, like California, you can't arrest folks. The problem with that in many places is that they didn't put in services. So you can't arrest people. When, when folks were arrested, they would take them to the police and sometimes they would get services. What's happened in California, and you can support this every time it comes up, is that now young people, instead of being arrested, they are uh, targeted for services. And that's um, how Missy is supported um, federally, state, and locally. So I'm sorry that I didn't see uh, that question. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And let us, if I know there's been some great things in the chat, people have been saying, I know my colleague Andrew Hartman is here saying important things. Let us uh, if anybody has any burning shares, let's come off of mute and just say your name and say what you got to say. That would be great. And go for it. Take the moment. Do what you need to do, really. Everybody's thanking you. And I just want to make sure we keep staying in our bodies, you know, shake, shake yourselves, resource, get water take care of yourself. And um, we were gonna have a breakout right now where we would talk about the impact that these three speakers, these three talks just had on you. But I'd love for us to keep our party moving and stay on time because our amazing team is here supporting us. It's their gift to us. And uh, so I'd love to keep our party moving. And if that's okay with you, our next speaker, Kyla, is that okay? Yeah, 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 okay, cool. And um, we will definitely have two more breakout. We will have two breakout rooms at the end of the uh, almost two o'clock hour and before we finish our day. And um, so I really, if anything is really burning in the chat, please somebody read it. Or if there's anything burning in the comments on Facebook Live, let's read that off. Thank you so much, okay? So let me introduce our next speaker. I'm so excited to introduce Kyla. And I know we could have talked like five more hours with Jennifer Lyle about what she's talking about. It's so important. And I just wanna appreciate you. And if you donate to Missy by the end of this week and you donate a certain amount, 150 bucks, you get a, a state-of-the-art new sweatshirt, special edition, and you get a state-of-the-art water bottle. I made my donation earlier today. Whatever you donate is awesome. And we will be able to figure that out in the, um, you know, make that special instruction. It's make some noise. Are you going to hold up something, Jennifer? Hold it up. We want to see. <laughs> and thank you for rolling with us today. We're so excited. She's going to hold up her the, the state of the art sweatshirt, special edition and the water bottle. It was also on Facebook live. We did a, yeah. Beautiful logo, refreshed logo and beautiful sweatshirt. Make sure to say what, what size you want, what cut. 
and also make some noise in your special instructions, okay? Thank you. Healing wounds, breaking cycles. It's so in the positive. So let me introduce Miss Kyla Lupo, my triathlon coach, OMG. And <laughs> Kyla is a triathlon certified coach with a master's in education from George Washington University. She brings years of experience in coaching people in a variety of situations, including triathlons. Kyla is also a U.S. master's level half certified swim coach and a Roadrunners Club of America certified run coach. As a coach, Kyla believes that anyone can try in the body that they have right now and works with athletes on a personal level to overcome their fear and doubts while getting fit and ready for their start line. Actively advocating for a radical level of body acceptance in sports and society, Kyla started Team Go Big as a place where all bodies would feel welcomed and supported. And the title of Kyla's talk today is Be Your Own Cheerleader, Make Your Own Noise. I put those two together, I hope that's okay. Okay, and here's Kyla. Hello, hello, loves. All right, Hi. we're gonna start. <laughs> Erica, thank you so much for such an amazing, amazing welcome. I am overjoyed um, to have such lovely things. And um, Erica is one of my athletes that I coach and um, I've seen her just do amazing things, but we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna start with video because um, I really like videos and this is a great video. So I've shared my sound and ready to go. We're gonna do this. This video is from a launch, a rocket launch in June of 2021. Um, in this particular video, this particular rocket ship is going up to the International Space Station with supplies for astronauts. It is the 22nd time that they are doing this. That means they've done it successfully 21 times before, right? All right, let's watch because there's nothing like a rocket launch in my mind. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. And lift off of the 22nd SpaceX cargo resupply mission, bringing new solar arrays to the International Space Station. Stage one propulsion is nominal. There is nothing, nothing like a rocket launch. Every time, every time, my heart in my throat. You can see here off the, the backside of the rocket is the central Florida coast. Um, and that's where I, where I live. We can't really see my house from there. We're a little bit south, but that's it's Cape Canaveral and it's right there. Um, there's another part of this video that I want you to see but I'm gonna mute it because all they're doing is talking about nerd stuff. And I'm gonna say, hello, I'm Kyla Lupo and it's very nice to meet you. Erica, I wanna thank you so much for having all of us here today to gathering all of us together so we can all make some noise. I wanna give a big thanks as well to Lawrence and Meredith and David who are here supporting us in the background, making sure we sound and look just fantastic and that we're not having any technical glitches, fingers crossed, knock on wood. My name is Kyla. I said that I'm a triathlon coach, but I'm really a lot more than a triathlon coach. Uh, I am a cat mom and an incredible baker and a long distance swimmer and a wife and a gamer and a nationally ranked athlete. And I'm a Floridian and I'm a space enthusiast. So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to talk to you about being your own cheerleader by showing you a video of a rocket launch. <laughs> In about 15 seconds, we're going to tune back in and listen to the people who are responsible for making sure this rocket gets launched. We're actually going to listen into them talking uh, about the rocket. Okay. Stay with it. Uh, Miko. 
stage separation confirmed. In back ignition. Did you hear that? Did you hear them cheer? They cheered. All right, they cheered. They've done this 21 times before successfully. This is their job. Their job is to launch rockets. And they did it, and they did it right, and they cheered for themselves for like the 22nd time. We listen all the time. We never miss a rocket launch because there's really just nothing like it. And every time they cheer because they did their jobs. Oh, but Kyla, there's millions of dollars on the line. It's a life or death situation. Yeah, no, I'm with you. There's millions of dollars on the line. It's a life or death situation. But for you personally, are your millions of dollars on the line when you do your job? Is it life or death for your clients when you're working with them? Maybe not like extreme life or death, but it feels like life or death because it's very, very important to them. When you're doing your job, it's your money that's on the line. If you're advising your clients, it's their money that you are either taking or working with or helping them or seeing through, right? So just because it's NASA doesn't mean that you aren't allowed to cheer for yourself when you do your job right, even if that's every single day. So I'm here to tell you that you need to be your own cheerleader. You need to make your own noise. And there is nothing wrong with that. I remember when I realized that they were cheering because they did their job right. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cheer for myself every day when I do my job right. I made a great cup of coffee. Yes, this is perfect, it's great. All right, I finished some training plans. Woo, good job. I had decided that if they could cheer for themselves doing their job, I could cheer for myself doing my job. It is important. All right, so we got that rocket launch. If everyone just wants to calm down a little from that and by everyone, I mean me, and take a big, big breath and fill your lungs all the way up, all the way up. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine the cutest thing you've ever seen. A kitten or a puppy or a guinea pig or a rabbit. Maybe it's a toddler if you're, if you're into cute kids. Go ahead and smile or laugh at that image. And, and then a nice big exhale. You've probably been inhaling for way too long. Let it all out, make a big noise. Smile, laugh, think about that super cute thing. And on your inhale, I want you to bring your intention back to yourself. And with all that joy and love from the cuteness, I want you to think about three things you love about yourself. And as you let your breath return to normal, you can open your eyes, grab a piece of paper and write down those three things. If you wanna draw a picture, if you wanna scrawl words out, it's all good, but we wanna get those three things that we love about ourselves written down. And here's what I'm gonna tell you, if you're struggling with this, guess what? You're a human being. We struggle. We struggle with loving ourselves, with finding the good things about ourselves. But guess what? I have got a pro tip life hack for you about that. My job as a coach could also be called a professional cheerleader. Woohoo! What does that mean? It means that I look for where you, where my athletes are doing a great job. And I make sure that I make some noise about it. And I make sure that you make some noise about it. It is really hard when we're in the of our own lives to realize how great we're really doing. So step outside of yourself. And this is not easy. It takes a little bit of work. You got to flex your muscle with it, but that's okay. You're going to step outside of yourself. You're going to pretend like you're looking at someone else's life. Imagine that you're looking at someone else's life and you know they need a pep talk, they need some cheering, they need some motivation. 
And then look at that other person in air quotes life over the past 24 hours. And think of one amazing thing that that person has done. Just one amazing thing that that person has done. I'm sure you can find one. For me, it was making a perfect cup of coffee. Now, I know, like, it's little things, right? But that's okay. If we go back to the 24 hours before that, it was that I actually took my ass to the swimming pool. I haven't been in a long time. Shh, don't tell anyone. And I actually went. And yes, I, in fact, cheered for myself in the car on the way home. It was a whole thing. It was great. I like made up a little rah, rah, cheer, cheer. It was, it was pretty hilarious. So how do we remind ourselves that we are amazing, right? Well, one of the things that came to me was cheerleaders like to spell things out, right? You give them a P and an S and a Y and a C and an H and it spells psych, hooray, right? So I grabbed a piece of paper and I did something that sometimes kindergartners do. I wrote my name down the side in letters, K-Y-L-A. And then I took those three things that I wrote down that I love about myself and I mushed them in. So they started with each letter of my name. And I've done this every couple of days for the last two or three weeks as like an experiment to see, is this going to work to like teach other people to do this? I'm going to tell you it works. Mine is right here on the wall. Post a note. Has my name written on it. It's not anything fancy. If you want to make something fancy, you can make something fancy. You want to go into PowerPoint and make it with all the script fonts and look amazing and emojis, go for it. But for me, it was more important to just have something done. So write your name down the side of that paper. Now, if you've got a really long name like Lawrence or Meredith or Elizabeth, and you don't want to have to figure out nine to 12 different things about yourself that are amazing, that's okay. Lump some of those words together. Lawrence might be L-A and then W-R and then E-N and then C-E together, right? It's okay, right? Then for each one of those things, starting with one of those letters, you're going to put down one of the things that you love about yourself. I, mine is a mishmash, right? So mine says, actually, I don't want to tell you mine. I mean, I do. I promise I do. What I want to tell you is the one I made for Erica. Isn't that like way better? Someone's beeping at me. Oh, my computer's beeping at me to say 10 minutes are up. So I want to show you the one I made for Erica. Are you ready? Because it's awesome. All right. So E is for energetically enthusiastic. I think we can all agree with that. R is rooted in authenticity. I is inspirational. Now she and I have the same K. I just want to say right away, we are killing it at swimming because Erica is really killing it at swimming. She is doing an amazing job. It's amazing. And then her A is all her heart because she does everything with all her heart. Now, if I can make one for Erica, I'm not even Erica. I don't even know what she did in the last two to three days of her life. I know she spent a lot of time working on the summit, right? You can certainly make one for yourself. And if you can't make one for yourself, I encourage you to find a stranger here in our summit group and say, hey, I'm going to make one for you if you make one for me. But you have to tell each other a little bit about yourself. Like you can't, it's hard. You have to sort of know. I made one for David too. Do you want to hear David's? Yeah. Yeah. If anyone knows David, they'll laugh at this. All right. So he's, he's down to earth. He's aware and alert. He is vital to your success. He's very intelligent and he's dad of the century. And you made him blush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are stuck for whatever reason, apparently I'm very good at doing these. If you're stuck for any reason at all, 
Um, I encourage you to send me an email. I'm Kyla at gobig.life and say, Kyla, I'm totally stuck. I don't know how to do this. My name has a Q in it. If your name has a Q in it, you actually probably have already figured out a lot of great Q words in your life. Um, you can also go to my website, which is gobig.life and you can schedule, uh, some time and we can chit chat and get to know each other. And Erica has a little thing for all of the people with all of their speaker stuff, right? Um, and my freebie is in there. It's a great one. It's seven steps for an awesome big day. It's an ebook I wrote. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you will love reading it and putting into place those things, whether your big day is a race day or a summit with lots and lots and lots of people or just an important day at work, a big interview, something to that effect. Those seven steps will really make sure that you, uh, you have a great day. So is anyone stuck? If anyone's stuck, I would love to give you some hot seat cheerleading. If we have time, Erica, do we have a few minutes? Go for it. Let's do it. We'll make it work. All right. If you're stuck or if you just want to ask a question, it doesn't have to be about cheerleading necessarily. People are saying some beautiful things about you, Kyla, in the chat and thanking you and appreciating you. And um, anybody want to step up and do this fun hot seat exercise with Kyla? Come off of mute. You don't have to do the whole thing. Maybe you're just stuck on a particular letter or phrase, or you can just send me an email. I would love it if everyone took a picture of their little post-it note when they're done and emailed it to me. I would love my email to be just full of that. Oh, I'll put that in the chat so you can see. Right on. Right on. Well, while we're in this zone of doing things and acknowledging people, let's let's acknowledge Kyla for her amazing talk. <laughs> you made me laugh. You made me really laugh and, and I appreciate you. And it's so fun Very to work. Good, good job. So highly recommend anyone and everyone to reach out to Kyla because your genius is just flowing. And I want to also just, I love how you are acknowledging David Kirsten, Wide Angle Media. He helps people put these things on and make it like it's normal, you know? So please, please. And by the way, there's somebody coming into the room right now that we could all wish a happy birthday to. <laughs> Katarina Rando! <laughs> happy birthday, Katarina. I think you've come in the room. Here she is. Happy birthday, Katarina. Happy birthday. Woo, woo, woo. We were going to hide, but it would have been a little awkward. Um, so David, I was just saying, David Kirsten, I wanted to say that he specializes in promoting live, promoting, producing live facilitated events. And thank you for the gift you are to me, David. So now give that a shake off. Thank you for your presentation, Kyla. Awesome job. Now we want to get to our next, next amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, talented speaker, Gail Knott. You ready, Gail? Okay, mm -hmm. let, me, let me give you a little intro. Gail is an expert at building a lifestyle business. Who wants a lifestyle? With over 20 years of experience in marketing, sales, and personal development. Gail and her husband, Corey, are the co-founders of this amazing platform called Lift, a coaching community for purpose-driven coaches and consultants that provide learning, inspiration, freedom, and transformation. Gail also is in training to become a certified professional diversity coach, CPDC, to further build inclusive and equitable coaching communities. In her free time, Gail enjoys playing and taking care of her young daughter, Caden, reading business and personal development books, homesteading, and traveling to traveling in their RV. How cool is that? Um, and I wrote down the topic of your talk, and then I, is about mom, mompreneurs. Do you remember what the name of your talk is? Yes, uh, Message Money and Mompreneurship. Thank you. Take it away, Gail. Thank you. And uh, as uh, Kylan mentioned, uh, with her exercise, I love acronyms too. <laughs> and we might even mix in some of those exercises. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for putting this together. This has been so much fun, so inspiring. 
And I just love how you are a beacon of community and that you are uh, that, that light where we all gravitate to because we know we're going to have a great time and fun time and welcoming time with Erica. So thank you for having me here. I like to live my life uh, by my values or so I think. One of the people that have inspired me for my whole life, I believe my whole life, my, at least my adult life, is Oprah Winfrey. And she had said that you can have it all, just not all at the same time. So I live by that philosophy. I was a hard worker all day. I worked all day, almost every day. I loved my business, so it wasn't really work, right? But there was a certain point where I just wasn't feeling connected to my purpose anymore. And I had to take a break. In 2018, I, I just felt lost. I needed a fresh start. I left the company that I was working with. And I decided, my husband and I decided to sell everything and move into an RV. So that RV that Eric had mentioned in my bio, we actually lived in it and traveled in it for about a year and a half. And we started our own coaching business. It was the, the change I needed to just kind of get a perspective of what was going on, what was going on in my life. And it's funny how when you want, you want change, life will give it to you. Because after a decade of trying, I got pregnant. <laughs> Surprisingly, a welcome surprise at age 42. And that definitely changed our lives. So my priorities shifted. And what I valued was even more important because it, it wasn't just gonna affect our family life. It's I'm gonna be a model for our daughter. And I wanted to, to live my values and show her that it is possible to live your values. So when I when Erica mentioned a lifestyle business, I'm not talking about like yachts and Lamborghinis and that kind of stuff. I'm thinking more about what you value, what's important in your life and building your business around that. So your life comes first, your business is a part of that, but it doesn't take it over, which is what, which was different for me um, when I first started being in business. So it, it gave me this opportunity to, to realize that I, I wasn't living my values and that's why I was so unhappy. In fact, if you ever feel um, stuck or upset or uh, unhappy, it may, be because, it may be because the situation you're in is not in alignment with your values. And when you do a values check, when you're able to step back and take a look, you're able to reassess and prioritize what is important for you. So I did that. I did that for myself. So how do you build a purpose-driven business? How do you build a business around your life? I would say the first step is to define your values. What do you value? And I'm curious um, to hear from you, are, what are your values? Uh, if you could put it in the chat, what do you value? Uh, if you wanna have a, a lot of fun with it, you could use your name and uh, make an acronym out of it. I put gratitude, abundance, inspirational, and love for myself. Erica, what are your values? What would you say is your number one value? Uh, making a difference is a pretty big one. Fun, laughter, safety, inclusion. I mean, do you want me to keep going? Other people, <laughs> I'm sure. Other people, shout it out. Yell it out. Don't What's forget your values? Integrity, fun, empathy. I love that. Integrity. Magic, compassion, strength. That's beautiful. And you could take that word and define it a little bit longer. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, someone went to, oh, there you go, David. Yes, uh, David's one of our LIFT members. So this is actually something I would invite you to do as well is to take that word and expand it into your definition. What do you mean by collaboration? What do you mean by vision? Because when I say integrity is a value for me, my definition of integrity might be slightly different for, for you. Um, for example, for me with integrity, it means walking my talk. So I actually changed my core value to walking my talk. So that if I'm gonna suggest something to my clients, knowing that I'm doing it for myself first. So I, I invite you to do that too, is to find your core values. Another exercise you can do, and you, 
don't have to do this here, but maybe we do in the breakout room if you happen to know one of the people in the breakout rooms is to ask your, your friends, contacts, family members, clients, and this may be a little challenging, but it's related to what Kylan mentioned, is what are some qualities of mind that you admire? I know that can be a very vulnerable question to ask. You could post on social media, you could text a few friends, but here's what I want you to look for is when they respond back and they will, and you're gonna hear some wonderful things about yourself. I would question what they, when they uh, give you what they admire about you, are your values reflected in that? And if they're not, it's okay. There's, there's no judgment if they're not or not. But if they're not, I would look into how are you sharing your message and your values? We have a, a, a speaker coming up, probably several speakers coming up, who are going to talk about how you're going to share your message. And you want to think about how can you share your values, your message to attract those ideal clients. But if you are keeping your values to yourself, no one knows, no one knows that. No one knows what you value, what you value if you're not sharing that message through, through your words, your marketing, your actions. But that's all, it's all part of you. And it's just a matter of amplifying that a little bit more. But when you do share your values, when you do share what's important for you in your life, especially because you're coming from a place of heart, you're coming from a place of intention, you will attract your people to you. So that's what I did. I started off with, okay, what, what do I value? What do I really value? time with my family, having the freedom to, to choose when I'm going to work and how I'm going to work and who I'm going to work with. That was all important for me. And that's why I, I started my business. Some of you may have known me from a previous business or working with another company, but this is why I started my own coaching business with my husband. And then when you, when you state that, when you say, okay, here's what I value, then you can start looking at how you're going to run your business. Because there's many ways to run a business. Um, three basic models for people who are coaches, consultants, who provide services are one-to-one uh, -one services. That's probably the, the one that we often start off with. There's the one-to-many where you're teaching a course or you're coaching people in a group setting. See, my favorite way for group settings is uh, what's called a cohort, where you have a course or you have a program, but you coach them through it so that they're not on their own taking a class by themselves, that you're there to support them. And that will increase their successes. And it will also increase your, your word of mouth of your business because they're reaching those successes. So one-to-one, one-to-many, and also products. And you could even combine those into a, a business mix that fits, fits for you. When I was thinking about what was important for me and having this freedom in my life, that helped me decide how I was going to run my business because I've got this little one. I want to be there as much as possible. And uh, for me, I also want to help as many people as possible, which is why we decided to create a program that was coaching, but accessible for small business owners. And that's how I created that model. But something I want you to think of too, when you're, when you're considering how you're going to run your business is to, to think about, again, what's important for you and to listen to what these so-called experts say, including me, <laughs> what other people say, uh, consider it, but also remember what's going to work for you in your life. Because those online gurus may say one thing, but if it's not in alignment with your values and how you want to live your life, it's not going to work for you. And that's okay. So I would recommend is start with you, who, uh, what's important for you, whether it's freedom, impact, message, time, uh, abundance, all those values that's important for you and you design your business from there. What I decided to do as a mom of a young one who I do most of the, the childcare myself is I decided I'm gonna take maybe two or three private clients. And then the rest of my clients, I'm gonna see in a, a group program that Erica mentioned called Lyft. And that, that works for me. 
I have an assistant that does a lot of my marketing. I do a little bit of marketing myself. Um, and if, if anyone's interested in any of those details, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, to share. I'm an open book <laughs> when it comes to that. An important thing to remember too, when you're prioritizing so that you can focus on your business when it's business time and then be with your family or, or loved ones or, or with yourself, self-care is important too, is if we're going to shut out that noise and not try to do everything at once, it's to focus on one problem, one solution. So I'm gonna help people with this problem and here's what, how I'm going to help them. And as that becomes part of your message too, you will be known as that person. You are the go-to person for that. Now, I love Oprah. Uh, she's inspired so many people and uh, in how she became successful. She overcame these truthfully patriarchal driven values of working so hard that it doesn't matter uh, the rest of what the rest of your personal life is like, that uh, sacrifice, if you're not sacrificing, then it's not, you're not really working that hard. And the patriarchal idea of competition, that we're all like one against the other. She had said that you can have it all, just not all at once. But I, I disagree. Sorry, Oprah, I love you, but I disagree. I don't believe we have to choose. I do believe that we can have it all in this present moment. And I invite you to redefine what that all means, what, redefine what it means to be successful by li living our values, your values of abundance, compassion, and respect by sharing your message, having a fruitful business that fulfills you, and the freedom to enjoy life with your loved ones. I know these are, are big words to, to say, and it's, it's something when you're actually doing the business where you may feel like, uh, you may feel lost or you might feel stuck. So I'll, I would recommend if you've ever felt that way, when you're, you're, you're trudging along, you're trying to get it done, but it may not feel like it's all working. And you've done the values check. You're working on being more in alignment with your values. Uh, some other um, tips I can share with you is to define your community. Find your mentors, your coaches, your consultants, people that you can turn to whenever you have a question. There, this Zoom room is full of people who are experts at what they do. And it's a, a great community to re reach out to. Erica is gonna share um, a, a Marco Polo group where we can stay connected with, with each other. So we can stay in community we, with each other. And if someone has a question, I hope it's okay, Erica, that I'm, I'm presenting this group as an option, is that Absolutely. if you have a question, <laughs> you on support is to share a message in our Marco Polo group. And um, someone will be able to support you. It's a wonderful thing about community is you never know who can help. And with that too, is to know that there is strength in being vulnerable. There's strength in asking for help. That the myth of being a superwoman, again, is a patriarchal uh, value to make us think that we're less than. We are enough and we are even stronger when we stay together, when we collaborate with each other. So you are already superwoman. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. Just, just who you are is super. Who you are is enough. So know that. Reach out for help. Uh, and if, if that's something that is foreign, challenging, difficult, find that one person who, who will be that support system for you. It might be Erica. <laughs> if Erica is in part of your circle, one of the things I love about Erica is that she is there to support. And there are other people in the community. I will, I will challenge you that you there is one person in your life who's got your back. Um, and if there isn't yet, there are people in this room who will be. 
if you're if you are open to being part. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, and just know that wherever you're in your life, even when you feel like, you know, I thought I made it and now I'm starting all over again. <laughs> That's the beauty of life. This is a cycle of life and we've got these opportunities to start over again, to refresh, keep being in alignment with those values, find your community, find support and, and help each other grow. Thank you, everyone. Woo! Awesome, Gail. I didn't get to say like my personal thing about you, but I just find you so generous and patient and loving and patient again when I've gotten to work with you individually and then in your Lyft community. It's just such a great mastermind. So thank you. Thank you for what you create. I love what you're in training about and I love what you're a master about or masterous about. Awesome. So I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Patricia Shaw is in the house from St. Louis, joining us from St. Louis. So where else are you in the world? Put it in the chat, put it in the comments. We want to hear how far and wide do we stretch? I know we got Cheyenne in Florida. We got Sherry in where? We got Kyla in Florida. Yes. Put it in the chat. Awesome. And we're just stretching wide and far and it's all with excitement and joy and passion for getting loud and amplifying and of all the amplifiers in the world we got miss katarina coming on right now katarina rando the birthday girl what the cat are you ready miss katarina i'm gonna i'm gonna be brief is that okay katarina, yeah, rando. katarina rando is such a light she helps women bliss in their business and She's helped me bliss in my business and I'm still in process all the time. And she has been such a supporter of me getting out and louder and prouder and unstoppable. So I really want to acknowledge you for how you hold me up and you've hold so many women that are here with us today up as well. You're jumping on my clubhouse. You're do I mean, just thank you. You're just awesome. And I'm so, I'm so thankful. Like, I hope you have a freaking amazing day. And why don't you take it away and tell us more? Thank you, Erica. Okay. Can you hear the, the gardener in the back? Okay, good. Not at all. Because no the, the, the blower just went on. And all right. Let's everybody, let's take a deep breath. Yeah. And you know what you're going to talk about today? Amplify your voice and uplift lives. That's right. My friend, how does that sound? It sounds amazing. Let's okay, do good. It. And as you all know, everybody, today is International Women's Day. And today is the day that we celebrate women in history, with that we celebrate women leaders around the world. And I want you all to know that you have a voice that supports you to change lives. It is the vehicle, it is the tool for you to uplift lives. And, you know, the thing about being in business is that there's always a lifetime supply of stuff to do. Would you agree with me, my friends? Okay. Now, people say to you, hey, if you want to amplify your voice, start a podcast. Okay, well, that's fine, but that takes a lot of work. Or they say, hey, why don't you uh, write a book? Okay, that's good. Done that. But you know what? That takes a lot of work. I want to give you some easier ways to amplify your voice. How does that sound? Does that sound good, my friends? Okay, good. Bing, bing, bing. Now, I'm going to share with you some ideas. And what I really want is for you to not just listen and say, okay, Katarina, that's, that's a good idea. I want you to pick something. Because here's the thing. Your voice matters. There are people around the world that your message is going to impact their lives. And I can tell you that I have the privilege of speaking from experience on this. I recently interviewed one of my clients who told me something I said to her, literally my friends, 25 years ago, when she heard me give a speech at an early morning breakfast meeting, she said, you said, be loud and proud. 
And guess what? All these years later, I'm still saying that to you. And she took that message to heart. Be loud and proud about your message and be loud and proud about the value you bring. And by the way, whenever you're loud and proud, wear your cape. And CAPE stands for, ready for it? I'm gonna write this down, okay? It stands for certainty, authenticity, positivity, and enthusiasm. Certainty that you have massive value to bring. Know that, know that in your core. You don't gotta know everything, that's okay. You don't got to know everything, but know that you have massive value. Authenticity. Be your authentic self. Who you are is awesome and amazing. And by the way, notice I didn't say who you are is perfect because in my opinion, perfection is a dirty word. It's like, who cares about that? Okay. Perfection is not required and it's certainly not encouraged because when you are human, people resonate with you. They resonate with the way you look, the way you sound, what you say, your personal experience. And by the way, related to this authenticity, you don't got to worry about looking good because you look great. And however you are, people are wanting to get to know you. And you know what they're interested in? They're interested in how can you help me? Certainty, authenticity, and the P is for positivity. Yes, as we know, and we're reminded today, there's a lot of depresso stuff going on in the world. But guess what? You don't wanna be a source of depresso stuff. You want to be a source of good. You want to be a source of uplift. You want to be a source of support and transformation and solutions for the people that hear your message. Certainty, authenticity, positivity, and the E is for enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is your energy behind your voice. You got to bring some extra energy when you amplify and bring your voice, because otherwise, just like in a Zoom room like this, people will get distracted. Bring extra energy. Are you with me on this? Okay, good. And I want you to listen to these four things, and I want you to pick one that you're going to really focus on amplifying. Thank you, Rose. Is it going to be your certainty, your authenticity? your positivity, or your enthusiasm, because we can upgrade every single one of those. And then I want you to look for some of these easy ways. First easy way, so I said, yeah, you don't got to have your own passive podcast, but you know what? You could be a guest on other people's podcasts all day long, every day. Even if you don't stop for lunch, there's a lifetime supply of podcasts for you to be a guest on. True, true. You can be like my friend Erica and you can host your own clubhouse rooms or you can host rooms in other people's clubs if you don't feel like having your own club. Guess what? Not only can you do that every day, all day long, but you don't even have to dress up for that. And you don't have to dress up for podcasts. No lipstick required. Let's, let's not, you know, you know what I love yesterday, we had our, our monthly networking for my clients and apparently we were supposed to dress up. I didn't get the memo maybe because it was the day before my birthday. I don't know, but I wasn't dressed up, but so I put the ladies in a breakout session and I ran upstairs and I put on a dress and I said, you know what? It's really easy doesn't only, doesn't take much time to get ready when you only got to look good from here up, right? Okay, that's it. You can get you can be looking amazing in one minute. You don't even got to leave the house. Are you are you seizing these opportunities to amplify your voice? 
here's my favorite one. Ready for it? And by the way, this is great for having impact. This is great for gaining Insta clients. Does anybody want some Insta clients? Okay, okay, I know my friend. Bobby, thank you for shaking your head. Now, speak to me. Just Bobby, is Bobby there with Bobby, Diana, Erica? Okay, I know you want some Insta clients, even if you're not admitting it. Here's, here's how you get some Insta clients. You host your own monthly Zoom thing. Whatever it is that you do, you host a workshop on it. I'm teaching my Achieving Sales Bliss workshop in a few days. Why? Because then I always, here's the super tip. I always, you always have something to invite people to that is not one-on-one, -on -one, that is not intimidating. And guess what? You get to showcase some of that massive value that you have to bring. Thank you, my friend, Pradnya. Bing, bing. And here's the other thing about all this, my friends. Let's make being a guest on other people's podcasts, let's make hosting your own clubhouse rooms, let's make hosting your own Zoom thing, let's make this standard operating procedure, which means consistency, rinse and repeat, grab and go. You don't got to take hours for preparation. Just show up because you know what? Who you are is enough. And I've got one more way for you to amplify your voice, have more visibility, touch more lives that I think is in the easier category. And that is be a guest on other people's platforms. Just like Erica, love to you forever, my friend, for allowing me and the other speakers to be with you today. There is, again, my friend, oh, I only 702. That's good because I got 907. That's so I am your questions, including questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Bing, bing. Okay. Bing, bing. Then we're, we're on, we're in sync, my friend. My friends, are you being a guest on other people's platforms? If not, I want to let you know that there is also a lifetime supply for places that would love for you to be a guest speaker. This, the, the, I'm, I'm doing this three times today. Again, because I only got to get dressed from here up and I don't got to leave my house, right? You can do it all day long, every day. You can meet new people. You can gain some Insta clients. But most importantly, you can have more impact because you, my friend, have massive value to bring. There is a lifetime supply of people to serve. And you know what? Every single one of them are looking for solutions for something. And some of them will realize and recognize instantly that you are exactly what they're looking for. That will only happen though, if you're willing to be uncomfortable, if you're willing to put yourself in new situations, if you're willing to be a yes, even when it doesn't feel awesome because you know you get to be of service. Like this morning, I got up at five o'clock in the morning to speak to some gals. Hey, I, I would say sorry for, well, sorry for me that I had to get up early, but good for me that I got to meet some new gals. I'm sending you some love. I'm encouraging you to amplify your voice. And by the way, call on me anytime for any reason if I can support you in any way. Bing, bing. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, everybody. My privilege to be with you. Thank you, Lawrence. Great to see your smile on the screen. Yay. Thank so you. So that means you are opening it up to five minutes of questions if you want, or do you if have- If you want, my friend, yes. I want to give me some questions or tell me what you're going to do based on our discussion. Hey, you know what's- Go yes, ahead. Harmony. 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 Go um, Katharina, right? Is that your yes. Name? Okay, I came in kind of like- how do you suggest, uh, besides here with Erica, getting on other people's podcasts? Because I have my own thing, but I don't right. know how to okay. get asked. Okay, so there is there are there are podcastguests.com, I believe is one. Matchmaker.fm is another. What I like, my favorite is matchmaker.fm because you can directly reach out 
to the podcast hosts and they can they can respond and book you okay but here's the other thing if you look on uh, instagram or clubhouse and you search or you search hashtags hashtag podcast hashtag health podcast hashtag women's podcast and harmony i'm not sure i don't know you so i don't know what your area of specialty is you can use hashtags for searches you can host you can use google to search podcasts but let me say this this is for speaking and for podcasting the best way to get booked is with a personal connection and for i'll take my friend diana morgan who i see her smile on the screen who's speaking in a little bit diana morgan is the queen of internet marketing, of using social media, of bringing your heart through your marketing. Diana can post on Facebook. Hey, my friends, I have a great, a great talk on XYZ, on social media for heart-based businesses. Who do you know that might wanna have me speak? Or who do you know that might wanna have me as a guest on their podcast? And you will get responses. Was it, was it a we, a Shannon was with me earlier today in class. One of the ladies said she recently did that. I tell all my clients to do that. And she got some interests. I've had clients book six speeches in 20 minutes when they did this post. So it's all about us using our voice. And by the way, something else my friend Diana taught me many years ago, whenever you introduce yourself, you introduce yourself as a speaker. You don't just say, I'm a coach, I'm a whatever. You say, a speaker. So I would say, I support women on a mission to be themselves, do their thing. I help them with selling, speaking, hosting retreats. And I'm always looking for new, amazing groups to talk to. When you introduce yourself, the people don't know, my friends, that you want to speak. They don't know that you want to be a guest on podcasts. It's up to us to let them know and ask. Let me tell you something. In 28 years of doing my thing, I can tell you that 90% of the time, I am reaching out to get booked for speaking. Sometimes, like Erica, I get somebody, I get a nice invitation, but most of the time, I am reaching out. I am finding these opportunities. You can look on Meetup. You can look on Eventbrite. There's a lifetime supply of places for you. Harmony, there's enough to get you started. Thank you. Anybody else have a question or want to tell me what you're going to do based on our time together today? Bah, bah, bah. Okay. Well, people Erica, are percolating. People are percolating. Yes. So okay. Feel it. So my friend, I'm going to put in the chat my uh, my my link to my free links page. And don't forget the free links page is there when people click on that link for that uh, uh, my esteemed assistant Meredith put in there. It's uh, right there. If you haven't checked out Katarina's page yet, there's a world of information. So you can do that there. And any final last Last yeah, well, I want to mention that there you'll find a checklist on blissing in your business. You'll find video on how to get more smiles on the screen right. for your events. You'll find invitation to my next free workshop. I got a lifetime supply for you. And yes. the most important thing I want to encourage you all to do is to, the more you amplify your voice, the more you're going to move towards mastery and amplifying your voice. It's not where we start. It's what we do consistently that moves us towards mastery. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, everybody. Blessing to be with you. Awesome. And somebody just put in the chat that they're thinking of a monthly Zoom to host. Ah, yay. That's, great. That's music to our ears. We want to just get louder and louder. Thank you again. It's so fun to have you on here and happy, happy birthday. Thank you, my friends. Awesome. Thank you, Erica. Woohoo. So take a deep breath, everybody, and let it out, as Katerina likes to say, and then take another deep breath in. And don't forget to let it out, because if you stay up here, you're going to be like walking around like, so don't forget to let it out, right? And <laughs> got to exhale for all the anxiety that you might be feeling. Blow it out. So let us now 
without further ado, introduce our next amazing speaker, Diana Konkoff Morgan, marketing strategist. I'm so glad you're here to hear this, Cheyenne, and so many of my beloveds on here. Um, published author, national speaker, 30 years of experience, She's my social media mastery coach, say that five times fast, social media mastery coach, so don't social media mastery coach. And I have been doing much better in spite of myself. And Diana has been holding the candle for me to take my steps. And she says things like, don't leave your body right now, things like that. She makes it very, very doable, manageable, and little steps, little steps, getting my message and then having it come right from my heart. So I really appreciate you, Diana Morgan. And if you wanna read all the other words or in the bio, go to that speaker page, cause it's all there. And let us all give a round warm of applause to Miss Diana Morgan. Take it away. Thank you so much. I am so happy and so excited to be here. I've been here for this whole day today and it's just been so inspiring. Even though I wasn't on camera the whole time, I was listening and I'm just, I'm super inspired um, to be here on International Women's Day. And Erica, you are a rock star and I'm so proud of you, can I just say? <laughs> It's just so awesome. Um, so my topic, uh, the, the sort of short version is social media for introverts. And, you know, what I would like to ask you is who here would like to get louder or get loud at all and make some noise on social media? Go ahead and put that in the chat or give me a heart or something and let me know, because that's what I want to talk about today. You know, each of us is an expression of the universe in a body. And we have talents and gifts to share to create more healing and joy in the world. I, you know, one time I wrote a blog and the topic was, the title was marketing is life or death. I know that seems extreme, but the truth of the matter is each of us has gifts to give and each of us has people waiting for us. The people that spoke today, all of us have things to contribute to healing of the world. And so the marketing is life or death is either about the death of people that might die because they're not getting our message and our death are dying because we're not getting our message out and fulfilling our purpose. So you can probably see already that I'm super, super, super passionate about this topic of marketing and being seen and getting your voice and your message out. So the question is that I have for you, one of my questions, how do you want to inspire? How do you want to be seen and heard? How do you want to share? What gifts do you want to share? And put that in the chat because I just want you to just start the process of being seen and being heard. What is the message that you want to share in your social media? Social media, how you are seen and how you are heard is just as much about what you do on, so on social media as it is about how you are being. Social media is just really like a 24 seven networking opportunity. When you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling like it's all too personal and too vulnerable, when your inner introvert is feeling stretched and when you're resisting, Remember one of my favorite quotes, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, every sweet hath its sour. Today, I want to inspire you to create a more powerful intention with your social media to make noise that you want to make to be seen and heard. So here's another question for you. When you get onto your social media, when you log on, you open up Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever you log on to, do you, do, how is it for you? Is it like, Ugh, oh God, I gotta do social media, kill me now, this is work. Ugh, ugh. Is that how you do it? Or is it like, oh yay, I get to go play with some of my friends for a little while today. I get to see what people are up to. If your goal is to connect and to network and to build relationships and referrals and clients, social media is the perfect place to do that. If your mindset is to get on social media and play with some of your friends and meet some new people, then you're gonna have a much more positive experience. And people are going to feel that. 
Social media is a great place to see what people are up to, to lift people up, to inspire, to educate, to motivate, and to bring more joy and healing to the world. So I would like to invite you today, right here, right now, to begin to have a mindset shift. From this moment forward, I wanna invite you every time you log on to your social media to think about your intention. Think about who are you talking to? How is this person struggling? And what is the transformation that you bring to them? How will you inspire, educate and motivate and bring your joy and healing to the world? Thank you. I see all these comments. If I stop to read them, I won't get to, I'm going to read them, but in a little while. So I want to encourage you to be present, to bring your whole heart essence to your online presence. In order to increase engagement and build relationships, social media requires more than just posting content. People buy you before they buy what you're selling, whether it's an idea a, pro a product, a service, a cause. So when you're liking, commenting, sharing, and caring, you're also leaving a digital footprint. You're physically, virtually, and energetically branding yourself. See, the truth is everything is energy. So we are all connected energetically. And people feel you. They feel your intention. They feel your presence. This energetic connection on social media is the thing that nobody talks about, but we all feel it, right? Consciously and unconsciously. Notice from now on when you're on social media, notice what you feel. What do you feel from people's comments? What do you feel from their images, from their videos? Do you feel their presence? Do you feel their intention? So when social media first came out, I had a thriving business, but I wasn't being heard or seen on the internet. I was definitely the best kept secret. I actually felt very intimidated by social media. I knew what to do, but I wasn't doing it. I couldn't get myself to show up the way I knew that I needed to. I mean, the truth is I really only got on social media from the beginning to stalk my kids. Yes, that's what I was doing. So mostly I was just watching what other people were doing, lurking, I call it, you know, just checking things Thank out. Thank you, driver. Oops. Have a great day. Someone needs to be muted. Lurking, um, I was posting, liking, commenting here and there, you know, just random acts of social media. Finally, I got so frustrated at feeling so invisible that I reached that point where my passion to fulfill my purpose, to heal the world, became greater than my fears and resistance to social media, greater than my shyness and my fear of public speaking, and greater than my fear of being seen. I became willing to be more visible, willing to share my voice, claim my mission and my vision. So I started using social media with intention in the way that I would use it, use any opportunity to connect with friends and associates. For me, being present was about being authentic, being real, and actually caring. And I saw how it could be a tool to reach more people with my vision and my mission and connecting and to heal the world. I started to intentionally connect with people that I wanted to connect with that I wanted to share their message and I wanted them to share my message. I started to take a deeper dive with my comments that I was making. And I started to really focus my intention. You know, a couple times a day, maybe like 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon. And because of these little shifts and because of my attitude shift, I started to like social media. And I started to reach people and people started to refer me. In fact, since then, since this powerful mind sh shift, I've helped hundreds of people in the past 15 years to grow their businesses online. And guess what? I'm no longer the best kept secret. So whether you're sharing your personal message, your business message, or your cause, the internet offers you powerful opportunities to reach more people. So I really want to encourage you to take that next step just dip your toe, just test the waters, just show up and put your screen on today if that's the littlest thing that you can do. 
The last thing I want to talk about, and this is so important, that social media relies on user generated content. Okay, that's like a super techie term, and I'm going to tell you what that means. It means you and me. We are the users, and it is our content, our words, our efforts, everything we're doing on social media that keeps social media alive. Because if it wasn't for us, it would just be ads, right? So we are the lifeblood of social media. We get to decide how we want to be on social media. You may not like the way some people do it. You may not like some of the things that are shared, and there's lots of ways to control your newsfeed. But the bottom line is that you get to decide. And I want you to really understand the power that you have to use social media with intention, to get your message out, and to not allow yourself to be silenced, silenced by the negativity, silenced by Mark Zuckerberg, silenced by anything, okay? You can, you can take your marbles and go run and play somewhere else, but social media is not going away. So I wanna encourage you to really start to embrace it and to start to play instead of it being ugh work and to just dip one toe in. So because it can be so overwhelming and so fast moving, and maybe you're an introvert, maybe you're not an introvert, maybe you're just overwhelmed and confused. What I would like to do is offer you some tools to simplify the process. I, I know I'm almost done, I'm almost to my time. So um, please, please, please take me up on my offer to come to my free training on Thursday. And you can attend live or get the replay because I just really want people to get it. But I really walk you through the steps of the whole heart social media success formula. How to, what to say, where to play and how to win. Because I have been doing this for 15 years. I have truly cracked the code. The strategies that I teach bypass the algorithms. I don't play the algorithm game. I play the how to be authentic and how to really get your message out on social media. So I just, I'm so grateful, grateful, grateful to be here today to get to share my message with all of you. I would love to invite any questions, comments, insights, any of you that are willing to put one more toe into social media to, to play in the game. I can't see anybody. We have a question from that we, our question is, what's the one important thing you want people to walk away with today? Okay. Do you want to answer that? Or anybody else? Anybody else? Hello, hello. What's the one important thing you want people to walk away with today? Okay, and Randy, is your hand up or are you just, okay, Randy's hand. Oh, he, his hand is up. Forget I thought you maybe you were just happened. blocking yourself from the sun <laughs> or from me. <laughs> Randy, come off of mute, please. Okay, no, I, I was just going to ask where um, we can find out to sign up for this webinar that you talked about. It's on the um, on the landing page of this event. Plus, I'm going to put it in the chat right this very oh, second. Okay. Okay. Um, and okay, so the one thing here's the one thing that I want you to take away from today. If you don't hear anything else, please, please, please play play on social media come play with us because you're just like Katarina said, just like so many people have said today, your message, your voice matters. And social media is a powerful force for positive change in the world, no matter how annoying it is. It is a powerful force for change in the world. So I really want to invite you to do whatever you need to do to get past your resistance to be visible. And I want to help you. Right there. Perfect. Perfect timing. Thank you. You're Diana. Welcome. You're awesome. Yes. If people are putting in the chat, great things that you got to read Diana and just, just really Thank everyone you. taking it in, taking it in what it could mean for you, whether you're just like, hello, I don't even know what my message is to the most loud and proud person. There's so much here for you to digest and integrate. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So thank you again, everybody. Hands up for Miss Diana. Thank you so much. Right on. 
So we can um, then go to what we're gonna do next is we're going to introduce Miss L. Ballard. Is L. Ballard in the house? I wanna make sure she's here and with us. I can't see everybody right now, so is L here? Okay, did L have to bop off? Mm. Well, we won't introduce L until she gets here. How about that? Because that would be wrong. Yes, Harmony says yes, so good. So I wanna hear from all of you, any of you who wanna put in the chat or come off of mute and just kind of like, what are you, what is happening to you as you're hearing these amazing speakers? We have two more left, myself and L Ballard. Uh, Harmony, you have shared, but can I have another voice in the room and then we'll come back to you. Anybody else who hasn't had a chance to share something, come off of mute, put it in the chat if you feel shy, no worries. Miss Elizabeth Stitt. What a fabulous event you have put together here. I am just goosebumpy and feeling a little bit weepy at how lovely and uplifted and inspired from Yolanda's songs in the beginning to just absolutely all of the fabulous women you have asked to be here today in the way that they've shown up wholeheartedly and um, wanting the very, very best for the world. So thank you, my friend. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm so excited and appreciative of the support you've given to me. We've been accountability buddies in social media. So thank you. Ah, oh, so good. So Erica, maybe this is a good time to create the one and only breakout room of our day because we want everyone to be able to connect with people. Maybe you haven't met everybody in the room. Maybe somebody's new to you here today. There's 25 of us, right? And um, with my special supportive human who tells me how, what numbers are, I am no longer the host. So David, if you make me back the host, then I can do the breakout room thing. But let's, let's create a breakout room. We have 20, 22 people. And then um, if, if you make me back of, of the, the host, then I can create the breakout rooms. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. So we're going to have how many breakout rooms did you put up your fingers again? <laughs> Seven. Okay, so let's go to seven breakout rooms. And in this breakout room, we're going to have groups of three or four and meet each other. Say what impacted you about today. What are you making noise about? Okay, what do you want to be curious about for yourself? All that and a bag of chips. Okay, and we're going to do this for about six minutes. So everyone will get a chance to share. If you're not feeling like you can come off of your video because you got two babies in your arms and you're like, no way, that's fine. Just maybe you share on audio, whatever you can do. We love and support you. And for everybody in Facebook land, tell us about what has been your impact from this experience today. So I'm creating these breakout rooms right now. It's everybody is a fair game. Everybody can participate. I'm opening the rooms, join the rooms, see you in about six or seven minutes. Here we go. If we can have music at this time, that would be great, but not. Okay, inside. yeah, I'll see what I can do here. Okay, so the question I'm putting in the broadcast is, what are you making noise about? Catherine, you're still here. Do you want to join or no? Kat, what are you making noise about? Um, what was the other thing I said? How can you support? What support are you looking for? I'm happy to go to a breakout room. My invitation was only there for a oh, second okay. and it um, disappeared. <laughs> you want me to help you get there? If you're here in this room, let me know if you need help getting to a breakout room. There and was if, nobody in my room. Okay, so let's switch you to another room. And how about with Dr. Catherine? That will work. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, um, let's see if I can do this thing. Okay, how do I do this? Okay, so Diana. I do love myself, but I'd like to be in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if I can how do I do this so 
So Catherine was supposed to be in room two. We could just be in a room here. Yeah, oh, just... I think. Oh, sure. We can do that too. I'm like, I so think I actually have the option to how join about, a room. How about room six? Or what room are you going to join now, Catherine? Is room I can go five? anywhere. I okay. see. The how about have the option to join a room? Yeah, I'll give it to you. I'm going to switch you over to room six. Uh, Diane, okay. you're already in room six. And then Catherine, I just have to send you there. And by the way, Cheyenne, you're supposed to go to room six. So you can also hear the amazing. Do you, do you see your room, Catherine? Let's see. It went away again. It literally it went, doesn't, it, it goes for like, a, not even long enough to click it. Let me okay, see. Let me, let me see. trying to send me. Maybe I'm I can gonna go myself. Room, okay, so you're already in, or in room six. So I'm going to room six. All right, let me try. Go for it. Anybody else need a room to go to? And if somebody could tell me when um, six minutes is up or something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Meredith. So Elle was traveling, so hopefully she'll be able to get back on. Okay. Um, but it's okay. Maybe we could do a second breakout room of connecting, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and if you are sharing your sound, David, could you on the share screen, you want to optimize, share, optimize for sound, share sound. And we don't want to share to breakout rooms. Don't click that, obviously. Right now it's coming in a little weird. So here's Elle. Oh, there she is. Okay, good. Yeah, I was out music not coming in. You want to go on the share screen section. You want to push share sound and then it will make it right. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, Elle. I'm so glad you're back. Hi, Erica. So sorry. Today okay. is a little crazy. That's okay. It's okay. Um, people are in breakout rooms right now. Do you yeah. want to go to a breakout room or you want to stay right here and ground? Um, how long? Uh, how longer? Like six minutes, five minutes, whatever. Six minutes more. Sure. I'll go to a breakout room. Okay. okay. Thank you. Awesome. Let, let's see. Um, I'm going to send you to a breakout room. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Unassigned is... Yeah, it says my sharing's disabled. Assigned to room one. Okay, here we go. And Thank Yolanda you. Yolanda and Pradnya and Kat are in there. Awesome. Okay, I love you. Thank you. Thank you, love you. I love you. Rose, did you want to go to a breakout room or Cheyenne or Gloria, Annie? Anybody want a breakout room? Let me know. Or you can just talk to me right here. You haven't come off of your, you haven't shown your face, Miss Cheyenne. We'd love to see you. No pressure. And um, Gloria, and I, I haven't, I'm not sure which Gloria, but I can't wait to see which one. You can put in the chat which one you are. And yes, Elle appears, okay, gotcha. I have a feeling the people who left may have taken a break. Oh, they run. Okay. Yeah, they probably ran to the bathroom or something. Okay, and then when it gets to be about two minutes, we're gonna put a message in the chat and I'll say almost time to wrap up. So if you let me know when that is, that would be great. Congratulations, Miss Meredith. That's um, okay. No worries, Rose. Congratulations, David. Like just the situation. Getting it done. You're doing great. You're doing so good. Thank you. I'm having hot flashes. I'm cold. I'm hot. I don't know what you <laughs> are. Are you wearing a bathrobe? This is not a bathroom. This is actually from Cheyenne. It, Cheyenne gave me this to make sure I stay warm. And it's like, oh, oh it's really cute. Thing. And um, no, it's not a bathroom. <laughs> and she said, yeah. Cheyenne has a little like QVC thing. Oh, you're going to say something. I'm just saying that's her cuddly jacket because every time I see um, Erica during the winter time. She has like a hat on her head. She has a scarf around her neck. She's always looking cold. So I figured this would keep her warm. Another layer. I'm so glad you're meeting um, Meredith. She lives in Florida. Uh, hey, Meredith, near you. I just wanted to say, Erica, you were born to do this. You're such a natural. It's beautiful. And everybody that I've been able to hear has been so professional and uplifting, inspiring. It's been a, you know, just a beautiful group. 
Okay. I'm so glad that you say that. It's so it's so nice to have you here. I really appreciate you coming. Um, I'm sending a message to the breakout on two minutes to wrap up. And um, I'm not showing my face because I've been. Uh, no worries. No worries. After today. You know, no worries. But Everything I'm... is beautiful and okay. you can catch the recording of this conversation. <laughs> So um, thank you for being here. You know, my parents are visiting your, your state right now. As in, in Sarasota. In Sarasota. Uh-huh. Well, you yes. must actually, they're looking for something over there. They're looking for something and they're having a little fun in the cold. They're getting out of the cold of the, 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 the uh, New York cold. Jeff Roberti lives in Sarasota. I told them that. I don't think they know who that is, but... So, um, and when it's like 30 seconds, give me a 30 seconds and then I'll bring them back. Ms. Oh, right. I'm putting myself back on you. Love you. I love you, bye. Cheyenne, Cheyenne is uh, my Juice Plus mama. She's been mm -hmm. eating it for much longer than myself with good results. <laughs> is it possible to see last names of people? Or you don't know from active uh, campaign we can see. Yeah, from active camp if they put them in, it's up to them to some extent. Yeah. Is there somebody that you're looking? I was just curious if it's Gloria Brown or which Gloria. So I'm just gonna run to the loo and I'll be right back. Okay. Gloria McCowan. Okay, great. Welcome, Gloria McCowan. <clears throat> so it's almost time for people to come back, right? 227. So I'm going to start to bring people back. In 30 seconds, everybody's coming back. Welcome back. Did you have a fun breakout room? <laughs> yes, we definitely did. It was great. You, you have to catch the recording for hearing the first couple of speakers. Uh, Yolanda rocked it out. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. That was that fun? Anybody That's have a burning yes. share? Say it again, Bobby. Anybody want to share anything about the breakout rooms and just what that was like for you and just anything you're marinating about right now? I'd love to hear. We have a, we're even on time. I can just say, you know, the, thank you so much, Erica, for- Introduce yourself, Bobby. Oh yeah, sorry. This is Bobby Dietz uh, from Digital Dietz. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Erica, for hosting this and organizing it and all the speakers and everything. And I love a breakout room. I love a good breakout room. I just like meeting people and, you know, I got to meet Harmony and we talked about dancing and, um, you know, it was just, thank you for the, for the space and the opportunity to meet new people. I'll just second that because I think that my favorite part is always when I get to meet people and get to know people and tell Wait, them Could you I say am. your name, Miss Harmony? I'm just sorry, say I'm Harmony. Name. I'm Harmony Gates. I, I, uh, I'm not going to give a business tagline, but, uh, yeah, I guess my my deep love is dancing and connecting through 
you know, somatically with people and, and energetically. But, but again, just coming into a small space, it, it just kind of opens it up. It becomes very intimate and personal. And I love that. So thanks for that, as well as your whole event, of course. I'm so glad you came over here. Oh, thank you. And um, Miss Katerina, what do you want to say? I want to say that I'm blessing for your amazing event today. And I want to ask you, how is it for you? Yeah, I am going to share about that in just a little bit. So I'll, I'll hold that for my little thing that I'm doing. Save the, the, the thing for, for a little bit, right? It's a little teaser. Anybody else want to share? And I love you, Katerina, always. I hope that you're all having fun with this connecting and percolating and marinating and you're meeting new people. And maybe if we can get in another breakout before we're done today, I really want to respect everyone's time, but wouldn't that be fun to have another breakout room? That'd be cool. We had, we're supposed to have three. We had one so far. Let's see what we can do. So without further ado, let us get our, our, our um, eighth speaker of today up front and personal, Miss L. Ballard, who's coming to us live from Texas. Is that right? Texas. And we just want to give you all hearts for your family, right? There's, your family is in the middle of a situation. Let's, let's give some hearts for, for you. Maybe you'll talk about that briefly. And so um, we just want to send you our love and care. So let me introduce you, though, because Elle, as a certified leadership and personal brand coach, speaker, and founder of Women of the World Network, Elle helps multinational women become happy leaders while staying true to her individuality and uniqueness. Elle built a successful career in marketing, helping companies promote their products nationally and internationally. She has been leading different kinds of teams, starting with the International Oil and Gas, 3.2 billion crude oil system, where she was closely working with the local government officials, continuing in the direct sales industry, and now expanding, what is it, three years? Three years, growing Women of the World Network. It's its birthday today. Yes, <laughs> it's our anniversary. <laughs> How amazing that is. Yeah, it's so exciting. Elle has been featured guest on following podcast, Expand Your Fempire the art of feminine marketing, voice of America and others. Having to start from point zero several times in her life, she knows how challenging the transition can be while maintaining your authenticity. That is the reason for creating Women of the World Network. And today she's speaking about personal brand. So take it away, Elle. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm returning hard to you and uh, just having this event, this space today, even though I'm normally in uh, East Bay, California, uh, in Danville, California, but today I happen to be in Houston, Texas. <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting day, but um, I want to thank you, Erica, for taking the time and all of that you did to bring all of us here. I want to also take this time to congratulate all this beautiful, amazing, powerful women in the room with International, Happy International Women's Day. Um, and we had our very first Women of the World Network meeting, March 8 in California, first California meeting three years ago uh, on this day. So I'm just so very excited. And I love how March, of course, intentionally, we chose the month of March for our Women of the World Network launch to celebrate women and I just want to also send prayers uh, to all the people all the women and men and kids in Ukraine uh, who are going through this terrible situation right now and I pray and wish for the conflict to be resolved my parents thank God are in a safe place they are not close to the border um, but you know it's the situation changes every single day so we hope we hope for the best for the best um and um, yeah, a couple of my relatives actually just um, just uh, fled. They are in Europe right now. They actually had to escape from Kiev uh, through Poland. So it's it's been it's been interesting, uh, but it's great to be here with you. And I am happy to bring you this message. I'm going to talk about uh, five uh, keys to developing and strengthening your personal brand. And um, I'm originally um, from Kazakhstan. I was born when Kazakhstan was part of uh, USSR and my native language is Russian. 
I was born when uh, it was a one big country, and in 1992 it collapsed. Kazakhstan became a separate country, and it's um, you know I came to the U.S. in 2000. Oh, just a quick pause, Erica. Can you make me a host so I can take her full screen? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, pause and make you the host. Okay, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Sorry about that. I'll keep going. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I came here 2002 and, um, you know, I wanted to, I had a, uh, worked in the corporate environment uh, in marketing capacity, gain, uh, you know, had a great experience, of course, a couple of different software companies. But I always want, my heart was always where I wanted, wanted to build something on my own, right? My own brand and um, had a great experience from direct sales. And all of that, I feel like it led me to launch Women of the World Network, where we uh, celebrate and empower and women uh, from different countries. And so my first key for personal brand, for strengthening your personal brand, is key number one is uh, your uniqueness and awesome to stay you know um like i just shared my story with you where i'm from uh, a little bit of how i grew up uh, the country was uh, which is no longer there and all of that makes me who i am right and um what is it for you what is your story uh there were a couple of women shared before me powerful powerful uh stories powerful messages were shared um but what is it that your story is about and I believe it was Kyla who brought that beautiful uh, taking your name and really um, each letter of your name and you know making it uh, I actually have it right here I have it right here <laughs> I love that right I love that so just reminding ourselves what is who it is that I am and uh, fully embracing that love that message um, number two key number two is your personality strength um, you know, this is, when I say personality strengths, there are so many, and I'm sure you have done so many uh, different strengths exercises that you have done. There's Clifton, there's DISC exercise uh, from John Maxwell as well. And um, those exercises will help you bring that, those strengths forward, right? Uh, sometimes we do something so automatically that we're not even realizing that we are operating fully in our strengths. And this is to say not to ignore your weaknesses, but really building on your strengths so that we um, develop that fully, that zone of genius that we are, each one of us is unique, each one of us has that. So once we know that, and we're really maximizing and deepening that and, and growing in that, that's how we become so much more powerful and magic happens, right? So that's number two, personal um, personality strengths. Number three, daily uh, daily growth rituals as well as passions so doing something every single day uh, or a week depending on your schedule something that you are passionate about something that talks to your soul something that brings you forward um, it can be exercise it can be a hobby it can be anything but that makes your soul thing you know um and some of us might say that it's business, um, but I'd say choose something that in addition outside of your business. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, but you know, choosing something outside of my business that I do. So for me, it's dancing, something that keeps me creative. You know, today is Women uh, International Women's Day, and um, I love seeing men in the room, by the way. <laughs> but uh, you know, we sent out an email today talking about femininity, right? So uh, for me, doing something that makes me creative, that brings that forward. And I think it was Tatiana Goodyear who said that the most successful women are the most feminine, right? And I love the topic of that. So whatever it is for you that brings that creativity forward, you know, take that and um, make it a consistent and add it to your daily routine. 
Number four, your main experience and professional skills. So here we are taking your professional skills um, and we are going to add it to your personal brand portfolio. For me, for example, it's marketing. My background is marketing. You know, like I mentioned at the beginning, I gained great experience working for different uh, companies in marketing capacity. Uh, my um, experience from the oil and gas uh, work uh, overseas where I was involved in building that huge project, working a lot with local government authorities so that I had to um, really exercise a lot of my communication skills, you know, and then adding to that my marketing skills, right? So building that, whatever it is for you, those professional skills that you have already in place, we're going to add that here. And number five is really taking all of that that we have uh, build that we put together and then we're going to let the world know about who you are and then number five here what I mean here is developing your influence further you know Katarina shared a beautiful message and amplifying your voice and 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 all of that right so we're taking that all of that that we have and bringing it to the market bringing it to the world and sharing it with the world um uh, creating that influence so those are the five and what I want to say also about personal brand is to me why I'm so passionate and why it's so powerful it's been so powerful in, in my life is because nobody can take it away from you Right. So no matter what you do in your life, uh, in my own experience, you know, being in a corporate environment, building a career and then starting on my own, my personal brand still with me. If I change titles, it doesn't matter if you don't have a business, um, if you change titles at work, you know, in your job your personal brand who you are still stays with you no matter what your title is today if you live in corporate world you're opening a business your personal brand still with you if you're opening two new businesses right uh that is still stays with you and i think that's what that's why i'm so passionate about it um and talking about that and uh and uh, in conclusion, I want to invite you to attend any of our meetings this month. Uh, just go to womenoftheworldnetwork.com into the events tab and you can sign up to any of our upcoming meetings uh, we have webinars we have clubhouse meetings we have five regions so you can attend any of those chapters as well but i'd love to see you there and again thank you so much for having uh, having me erica i hope i brought some value back to you Awesome. And we have time for you to take a question or two. Yeah. You, want, you wanted to, maybe you've already answered this, like the Women of the World Network's mission, yeah. but does anyone have any questions or we can talk about the mission if you didn't already? Yeah, um, I'd be happy to talk about that. So our mission is really uh, helping women, uh, you know, do whatever they want to do, but being who they truly are, staying unique to who to the, who they truly are, uh, you know, maintaining their personality, their individuality into who she is, and then uh, building on that. So we provide everything we do. We have several different programs. Um, uh, we we're about to publish our second book, April 7th. But everything we do is around personal fulfillment, professional growth and global connections uh, and so all of our programs are aligned around those three areas so it's not only networking that we do but also uh, helping women grow personally and professionally and building those heartfelt uh, relationships as well in the process yeah great i'm just leaving any it. other questions for l Women of the World Network is something you definitely want to come play with. Like you feel like you've kind of gotten a chance to play with the speakers here today a little tiny bit. So it's like we're giving you tasters and teasers for deeper dives with each of these amazing speakers. And Elle has created something. It's amazing. I went to this 100 person meeting and it was a much more fancier platform than what we're playing with today. There was a bigger stage. So 100 people from how many different countries were there? Oh, yeah, we had different. I don't even remember. Well, it was like 100, <laughs> yeah, like at least 10 different countries. <laughs> different, it was amazing to be part of that. And you had support from an event planner. It was just amazing. So um, 
definitely, definitely connect. I might, my wish for everybody at this event is to at least connect with two, three new friends. So if you've only connected with one person, maybe it's time to mess it. You're allowed to chat with people, pet chat privately to people. Like we want you to be connected ever so more so, ever so more so. And every one of these speakers is so accessible and available. Like they love to have connect, connecting ways, connecting uh, capacity. So L, I feel like you're so accessible to me and you have created such a huge thing, a huge platform. So thank, thank you, you, Erica. And again, lovely to hear you, everybody. Oh, let's give her a round of applause. So great to have you here thank today. You. So great to be here. OMG. So fun. <laughs> Take good care over there. Thank you. So I am curious, does anybody... Um, so, so maybe Gail, you can give me a little intro and I can do my, my, um, and could you make it as brief as possible? So we have more time for more things if possible. I know. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> I can go on and on about how wonderful <laughs> Erica is, but I will not to honor everyone's time and have more time for us to network. So it is my pleasure, absolute pleasure to introduce our, our speaker for our last speaker, our hostess with the mostess, Erica Gimbel. She's a healer, ma massage therapist, psychotherapist, and fruits and vegetables advocate. She's passionate about uplifting people who've been down and out, trauma therapy, and as well as a growing speaker and facilitator of workshops that support expression, decreased pain, and wellness. Please welcome Erica Gimbel. Thank you again. I am so excited to get to have a little moment with you besides all the other moments that I've had with you all. And, you know, if you just think about what's just happened today with the shares and how does this land with you? How does this land with you? All of the material, some of it is kind of intense. Some of it is kind of like creates curiosity. I would love for you to put into the chat, like, do you feel like you got stretched today? Do you feel that you got moved in some way? I hope so. I hope, I wanna hear. And if you're on Facebook land, like share what your comments are, what moved you, what impacted you on a scale of zero to 10, where are you on the scale right now? I have been schwitzing and sweating and I'm so excited. I've been putting on layers, taking off layers. I am so excited that we created this thing and boy, I'm going to like take a nice walk after this is over. But, you know, again, I'm a somatic psychotherapist. So I always like to imprint things that are um, touching me. And I, so I don't know about you, but I need to stand up and move around a little bit. So I want to invite you all to do so with me to actually like do a little kind of yogini thing if you're willing. And if you're not willing, don't worry about it. You could do it in your mind. And just this idea of swinging your arms, oops, sorry, tower garden, um, just swinging your arms around and uh, just like taking the energy of everything that we just digested today and like just little swings, they can be bigger. I'm a little bit in a space challenge area right now, but just like letting yourself twist and let your feet get into it if you're feeling frisky and you can hit your body and hit your ribs and hit your adrenals and, you know, just like brushing and appreciating the energy that has been shared with you today. You're allowed to move your body, encouraged, invited to, and this helps me kind of ground. I'm doing this for myself also. And Kyla, I love what you said that you were like, this is for myself. But you know, this idea of imprinting, grounding and resourcing, that is a huge part of the work I do with my clients, my, my participants in my workshops. Yes, exactly. We could do this for like five minutes and you can keep going. Just totally go for it. And that idea of feeling all the feelings and all the excitement and all the jazziness of what is possible for you and your business. What is possible for you as you get your voice up and going loud and proud. That is so much about what I'm 
I want to help you all activate you. And if you're kind of like, I have no idea what my next step is, that's okay. Because guess what? There's a room full of wisdom people here, wisdom women and wisdom humans here. Like if you have a tech issue, Bobby Dietz, have a convo with Bobby Dietz. If you have an SEO question, talk to Randy Lyman. There's so many amazing minds here. So that is, you know, just, just right off the bat, how are you resourcing and grounding with all the information that we shared with you today? And don't forget, you can donate to Missy if you're feeling called to take action on that behalf. And, and you can win a sweatshirt and water bottle that as their thank you. But we want to make sure that we get to thank you too for making a donation of whatever you end up donating. You can you know, let us know that you donated, make some noise in the special instructions. So I wanted to share with you a little story that's also kind of in the somatic vein. Last year, I talked to a friend that had just gotten going with swimming again in February, in the middle of the pandemic. My swim team, I know, swimming, swimming, swimming. Swim, my swim team here in the in the in the Bay Area. Thank you. Thank you for putting that in there. That's the link to donate to Missy with that amazing talk we heard with Jennifer Lyle of Missy. Um, so anyway, I had a chance to go and do something I haven't done since I was 13 or 14. I got in the pool with a swim team back in February. And this whole year has been a somatic experiencing of growing my strength growing my courage, growing my energy. I mean, that first day in the pool, the swim coach was like, Erica, you can take a break right now because I looked like I was drowning, you know? And now when I go swimming, I have built up my stamina, my energy, my muscles. That's a muscle right there at the top. Don't, don't reach for the bottom, reach for the top. And, um, I have, I have been in a physical manifestation of gaining my strength by having that swimming experience. And every other thing that I've been doing in my, my speaking, my workshops, I've taught three or four workshops in this past year as a person who is helping people light up their creativity using the artist way we did this book called Crouching Tiger, Hidden Artist. We, we, we got to dive into that book as a, a small committed group. And now what I'm thinking about as I've been doing this make some noise, um, this topic, this theme is that we need to keep going with this. There's so much that's going on personally and professionally that needs to be uplifted and supported and amplified. And all the major amplifiers here, yes, yes, yes. And I am, I am offering this in an easy way so that we can continue the conversation. Like, how did you lift up? How did you connect with this person that was the actual answer to your prayers from, from connecting here in this session today? So I offer that as an idea of what do you need to strengthen your muscles about? Whether it's in the physical, yes, definitely talk to Kyla Lupo because she is the best at what she does as her triathlon coach self. And, and in terms of what do you need to do that takes your next step that helps you get out of your own way, that's really my genius. If Whether it's being able to do that radio show. We have a friend here who started his own radio podcasting weekly as a result of being in the Crouching Tiger Hidden Artist uh, community. I also offer this movement protocol that is really powerful for people who, again, it's in the expression zone and it's also in the pain zone. I'm a kind of expert at people experiencing physical pain. And so this idea of just doing those movements, those are big movements we were all just moving around with, but even smaller movements than that can really help with the physical pain. Yolanda, I was sharing with Yolanda the little little micro movements that you can do that can bring blood to the area where there wasn't blood before and flow. That is called intrinsic movement for bliss and creativity. We love the bliss word. So I shoved that in there for my class. So those are some of the things I've been really cooking up in the past. And now moving forward, I really, like Yale said, I invite you to come over to our Marco Polo group, make some noise. 
I invite you to come to the after glow party on Thursday at noon Pacific time for the make some noise after glow party. And we'll get to offer even more goodness over there and more mischief and more amplification of what is it that is your next step. I really can't wait to hear what is your next step with whatever you're up to. So that's my share for today. I hope that gives you like a curiosity. I hope that makes you feel some wonder. And that's really what this is about today. So it's my, it's my gift to you all that we created this thing. I was feeling really bad back in December because I, I had somebody take their life and it was just really terrible and sad. And she, this person that took their life was a creator. She was a writer. She was an artist. And I, I felt that, what can I do about this? What can I do about this thing that I can't really comprehend that she would end her life? So when David Kirsten asked me, would you like to have a summit? I could just feel myself go hells to the yes. And what is this theme going to be about? And then I had some music on Spotify and I heard Alicia Keys singing with Brandy Carlisle this song, A Beautiful Noise, which we can share that Spotify podcast with you in the chat. And that was it. Let's make some noise together because we as women, we as humans on the planet need to come together and be better. We need to find a way to support each other. And that's what this is about. So I'm so excited you're here. This has been such a fabulous day. I feel so many feelings. You can ask me in five minutes how I'm feeling. I'm going to feel differently. But right now I feel like I can finally exhale, but I know our work is just getting started. Like we have so much to do. We have so much to do. And I've said that to Jennifer Lyle in the teaser video I made with her, like, God, we have so much work to do. So I hope you feel as sweaty and as excited as I do. And empowered to take your steps. That's what I want. So in our time left together today, we have four minutes. I'd love people to share what their takeaways are. You could put it in the chat, chat away. You could put it in the comments. Who would like to share who we have not heard from today? Thank you, Diana. Yes, it's very painful to lose friends. Yes, it's very painful. Yes. And again, this idea of where there's pain, there is opportunity. David Kirsten has a share. Oh, thanks, Erica, and great work. Awesome summit. I just wanted to say, I think you show it in this summit that really change has to come from all quarters. So really people in, it doesn't matter if you do marketing, if you do health and fitness, if you do, you know, you have a women's organization, but we can all empower each other from wherever, what it doesn't matter what we do. Maybe we do, you know, uh, all these different trades. And I think you really showed that in this summit that it's really about the desire to make a change and um, the community aspect. Thank you, David. Absolutely. Anybody else want to share? I did you raise your hand, uh, Lawrence? Was that you? No. -uh. Okay. <laughs> so people are putting great things in the chat. Here I am. Can you see me, Erica? But I can't hear you right now. I don't know why. Go for it. Go for okay, it. Okay, I just want to thank you for your enthusiasm. That comes cl so clearly through. You're you're playful and your but your enthusiasm is like over the top, and I love that about you. You're high energy and you're you're popping around so fast. I can barely keep up with you, and I'm a pretty high energy person. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you for gathering everybody, for you know saying yes, for coordinating this. I just want to bow to you and honor you for doing that and saying yes to that desire in yourself. So that's what I have to share. <laughs> thank you, Harmony. I hope that it lifts you all this energy, and you know take it out to all the good work you do, where you bring people together to move. Pradnya, what do you want to say? 
I just want to say, of course, people refer to your big heart. We're having a little trouble hearing you. But your that? tenacity and persistence. Because if you, um, I'm at my uh, daughter's school picking her up. Uh, is this any better, Erica? It's better. If it's not, better. It's better. If not, then I'll just text you my message. But all I wanted to say is that your heart shows up big time, but it's also your tenacity and persistence because you reached out to each one of us. And if you did not invite us, we would have missed out on this. I mean, and I also love the format of this whole session where you invited people to speak for a few minutes and they were really sharing powerful nuggets with us and inviting us to the whole course you know, after sharing the appetizer. So I just felt that the way the summit was organized and then of course the lineup of speakers, uh, Katarina, Diana, Gail, all others, I might have missed a few. So thank you very much. I definitely will tune into the recording. Thank you. I can't wait for you to hear those first speakers, Pradnya. You missed uh, the, the, the singing with Yolanda Davis and it's like your topic mindset is so important to you. So I can't wait for you to hear that. And thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you for sort of fighting your way to get to come here. There was some technical glitches and <laughs> I, I just want to respect everybody's time. It's, it's uh, our three hour mark. I am not going anywhere though. I'm going to stay right here and I'm happy to hear anything else anybody wants to say, but thank you so much for tuning in and everybody let's give everybody a round of applause. Thank you so much, Erica. Love you. Uh, if you have, if you're okay with taking a picture, put your heart in the screen. If you're not, turn your video camera off and let's do this. You got it, David? I'm almost here and I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> here, let me take one more. Okay, and, thank you. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. okay. I'm going to stop the live stream now so people can talk offline, but uh, okay, great. say bye to the live stream. Bye to the live stream. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. bye.